Okay, I think there's sound now. Yay! <laughs> Hi, Dawn. Okay, so so late now. Okay, technical difficulties they do happen. Okay, thankfully it has been resolved, so now we can continue. <laughs> okay, so um, if all else fails, restart your computer. Okay, it worked this time. All right, so um, today it's all about uh, melons. Okay, melons are really perfect for summer. Um, they're refreshing, they're not too sweet, and you can eat them fresh, you can um, put them in shakes. Um, they're just fantastic. And also just looking at them, you feel um, a lot cooler. I, I don't know, it's the colors maybe. Okay, so it's summer soon in UK, so I'm going to go ahead and do a pre-summer painting thing using uh, melons. So I figured um, I chose a photo with a, a closed, uh, with a full lemon. Uh, lemon melon and with a um, a slice out because um, it's also um, the, the texture of the lemon a melon oh my gosh I keep saying lemon the texture of the melon is also very interesting so um, we don't have to do it hyper realistically don't worry but you can if you want to um, but we can also just wing it okay so uh, when I do stuff like this it's so um, detailed um, unless you really want to go and uh, copy it completely you can just uh, create your own style of things okay so I'll show you later um, the different ways that you can use and it's up to you um, which one you'd rather go for okay so meanwhile um, I'll now flip the camera down so you'll be seeing my um, desk and um, I didn't share a sketch because um, I just really sketched the, the basic shapes of um, the texture I didn't um, sketch it anymore okay so now let me flip this down okay and then flip it around as usual okay and then adjust my lights all right so I hope this is clear enough Let me just move this a bit forward. Okay, uh, let me zoom in as well because we I'm working on a smaller paper as you can see. So that I don't take up um, hours. If I work big, it's going to take so long. Okay, so um, I'm using colors from two palettes. Um, I We can use from one, of course. We can use colors from... Uh, we can use just six to eight colors if you have a, a limited palette you can totally still paint this okay so no worries um in my case um, i'm using um the allegro because it has um it's, it has the colors that i need already and it will make my work so much easier but you can totally mix the colors that you need okay so let's start with um the lightest colors okay so um, I shared the reference photo um, if you check the event it's there but just in case um, you haven't seen it I'll just show you quickly okay but I won't be able to keep it on screen because it's gonna take up so much space so this is the the reference photo okay so I'm just going to focus on the sh on the um, melon and I'm not gonna do the um, the grains of the wood okay just these two right so to the side now okay so again usually um if you've seen me before I, we always start with watercolor we always start with the lightest colors so that will be um here the palest the veins of the uh, melon it's very pale yellow and here too we will also um color with a little bit of uh, pale yellow okay so just choose your favorite brush usually um one or two brushes will do so I will start with my number um, seven maybe five or seven um, round brush okay so in my palette I have this uh, lovely color um, Jean Brilliant so I will use this later when when this is um, watered down it's a very nice pale um, orangey color but uh, let's first start with uh, lemon yellow watered down for this section here okay so if you have a mixing plate then you can go ahead and use that okay. so in my case 
all my mixing plates are so used so I usually just make space for the new works that I'm working on so I just wet it and then I use my paper towel to just remove it very easy okay so now I have an empty spot all right so again let's start with a little bit of pale yellow so just fill your section here with water enough water okay so a bit of lemon yellow okay not too much and again it's always nice to have a paper handy so you can test it out okay and then I'm also going to put a little bit of uh, yellow dip just a little bit just to tone down the the brightness of the lemon and add more water okay and then again just test it out if it's pale enough okay you want it very pale you can hardly see it now but there's a very pale wash of yellow so you want that because um, the veins are not white they are a very light yellow I'm just going to add a bit more because again it will dry lighter and might be too light okay so I'm just going to cover the whole outer part of the melon right here and I won't even mind if I um, leave some whites here and there no prop no issue and here too okay so the the skin of the melon okay so now we'll we'll do a more relaxed um, painting nothing too um, detailed though it is rather detailed but you don't have to you don't have to follow it exactly okay and once you have that down um, then you can uh, go ahead and do this part but I suggest you wait for this to dry or you dry it so that um, it doesn't go into the wet part here okay so just dry it if you have a blow dryer or if you have a heat gun then just you can use that Since it's not too wet it won't take long okay now we have again um, I mentioned earlier um, John brilliant right here okay but what if you don't have John brilliant okay if you don't have it then you can just uh, mix for an orange okay but make sure that it's not too bright okay so in my case I have John brilliant so I will go for it use your um, warm warm red and warm yellow so that you can uh, get a warmer orange as well okay so using John brilliant I'm going to cover the whole area the whole open section of the melon okay so let me just I think I'm going to do a wet and wet. So let me just wet this first. Okay. So wet the whole section. Okay. And then add your color. You can make it darker if you want. So I'm starting from the outer section and then just completing it inwards. Okay, so that is the first layer. Um, you will need to add 
a few more layers later on but for the first layer it's fantastic so it's it has the that nice um orange that melons have so i'll uh, try to use your warmer reds and warmer yellows so let, let me try it what if you don't have john okay so let's let's use another mixing plate okay so you have your i already have a warm yellow right here so let me just awaken this okay so let's mix some warm um, red with it i'm going to use scarlet So add, add it in slow increments, okay, in little increments so that you don't mix a too dark color. And you get a similar nice warm orange, okay. So just try and go for um, this mix of, you know, the nice smelling color. But if you use a warm yellow and a warm red, um, it will come out similar to this instead of using um, a bright cool yellow and a bright red okay so now let's go to here using the same mixture and um, again using the same wet and wet I think wet and wet is perfect for the inside of the melon because it gives it a nice texture so today we will, instead of my usual wet and dry, we will do wet and wet. Okay, so wet the whole section. It has a dash of orange already, but no problem because it's the same color. But if it isn't, make sure to rinse your brushes properly between colors. Okay, so next, again, once you've wet it, Add your orange mixture. Allegro is perfect for summer. It has so many summery colors. You can paint a lot of fruits using this palette. Okay, so Go towards the rim, even the sections where there's a greenish color, because you will layer on top of that anyway. Okay, so not to worry. And sometimes I just add a bit more concentrated color here and there. While it's still wet, it's gonna slowly move towards the other wet areas. So that's the magic of wet and wet. If you want to play around with that effect okay so that's done and now we will again dry this before we add the next layer okay so let me just again go over this with my blow dryer paper a little bit okay so this is actually nice when you have granulating colors because it will give it texture so if uh, if you want more texture and if you have granulated paints then you can totally use it for this but if you don't want texture then um, go for your more transparent and a very 
smooth base. Okay, so now um, we will add a darker orange around here. Okay, so we'll mix for that. Okay, let's go for our orange. Same orange, drawn brilliant. Or the orange mixture that you've worked on. And then I'm going to add some warm red. I'll add English red right here. But I won't mix it to the whole mixture. I'm just going to add it here at the edge. Or you can put it on another section. Okay, in my case, I'm running out of space, so I'm just <laughs> doing it here. Okay, so I'm not going to go over to the edge. I'm going to leave a slight area here for the green. Okay, so just apply it here and with my usual technique of just dipping your brush in the water and going over the edges. Okay, so you pull the color inwards so you get a gradated effect. Okay. If you're not happy with it, you can still go over it again later. Okay, so let's soften it towards the edges here too. But not too dark. Okay, you want your green to go over here later. So just soften, soften the edges. you want it to be darker just get your paint and dab here and there and just move it slowly towards the center if it's too dark add water to your brush to lighten it and do the same okay so just take your time with this So here I'm just adding here and there because I don't want it to be a too um, straight curve. I want some areas to have a bit of a darker orange here and there. Adding more texture really so it looks more, um, more real. Okay, and then um, I'm also going to add a darker orange in this section for the part where there were the seeds and you also remove some of the seeds okay, so it's not the whole area so it's dry make sure it's dry before you add your texture so you can do this um, very very textured or not up to you you can make this very realistic or not. Again, up to you. If you want to make it very realistic, then you have to sketch this out. But if not, then you can just do something similar to what I'm doing now. And just looking at the reference photo and adding where I see the shadows here and there. Okay, as, as long as it looks like melon, then you're okay. Okay, so today we're painting a bit more loosely. A little bit more. Okay, so I'm just going to shift to a smaller brush so that I can add the smaller details. Okay, make sure your brush is clean. Mine is kind of has a bit of a brown color. Okay, so using the same color, I'm just adding the vein-like 
like, like the little fingers. Then adding seed like shapes here and there. Again, you don't have to do this, you can just do the, the texture if you want. Okay, now I'm going back to my bigger brush and just using the tip, I'm going to add a bit of the sh shape here. So when you add these details, even though they're not too detailed, it will still make it look like a melon after. So that's all you want, okay? We're just really trying to get the shape of things. And here we'll add a bit of shadow. Okay, so still we will work in layers. Even though it's more relaxed, we will still do the layers. So I'll wait for this to dry before I add a, a swash of shadow. Meanwhile, I'll add the green now to the edges. Okay, so I'll start with um, olive green and Oreo and green mix, these two. Okay. So let me just twist this around. And clean this up a bit. Okay, so Oreo in green. And olive green. So again, I'll check it first on my paper to see if I like it. Um, it might be too bright, so I'll add a bit more olive green. If it's still too, too bright, then you can um, add water and see how it looks like paler. Okay, that looks better. So I'm going to apply this now to the edge right here. So this is the first layer of green. Okay, and again, we will soften the edges. Just dip your brush in water. So we're blending it a little bit towards the orange. Like, you know, when you look at your watermelons and melons, the green slowly fades into the red and the orange. So we're trying to mimic that here. So what are your favorite fruits, guys? Mine, I love um, mangoes and bananas. Also, they're... Um, very easy to, to buy here, especially bananas. And then um, when it's in season, I also love um, avocados. Is that a fruit? Maybe not. But <laughs> we usually have it for dessert. Okay, so we have our first layer of green here. And then let's work here. So this is actually a bit more yellow. I think maybe um, this is more in shadow and this is more in light. So let me just add um, extra color here. Green apples and pears. Ooh. 
apples yeah i can buy it here pears so uh, yes but can be quite expensive <laughs> that we don't really grow it here but i love them <laughs> when i can get them yes okay so um i will add more yellow here so let's see let's see i think i will use um yellow deep right here it is deep but if you it's very bright yellow which is i think perfect for this so i will stain this with yellow deep first before i continue okay all right so let's start here from the sides just to give this a a more golden color that's similar to the reference photo okay so when you're still in your early early um, layers you can totally do this because while well, the orange that we applied was actually lighter and paler than this yellow that we're adding now okay and then I will just fade it towards the center here because it's not this is lighter in this section but we'll still give it a stain of this yellow Okay, looks better. So this looks like it has more light shining on it, so it is a brighter color. Okay, so we also have to consider that when looking at our reference. Okay, so now we see the different colors. Okay, cool. Okay, let's go back here. I think this has time to dry. And I'm going to add a swatch of shadow but i don't want to use brown because it's just too harsh so instead i will use the english red and then add a bit of green to it okay just to get my shadow and i will add shadow here okay so try not to use um a weird brown if you can mix browns from the colors that you used here in your palette then um, it will be a much much better brown than using a already pre-mixed brown sometimes a brown that's just from your palette will look too harsh so you can instead mix your browns so the green that I use the red that I use I use them and I mix my browns okay so if you do that you'll have a more natural looking brown that will be harmonious with the other colors in your palette okay so we've shaped it Okay, so just shape the, the cave where the seeds are. And add the shadows where they are. So again, with your green and your red. Right here. Here. okay and I think I can now add more orange so we can again mix for that I'm going to add a bit of yellow to just give it a more vibrant color and I'm going to add another layer right here so I usually just add layers if I feel like it still needs an more oomph sometimes it 
comes out too pale and of course we don't want that we want our fruits to look yummy so don't be afraid to add more layers okay as long as your paper is thick enough it will be able to handle it okay so i love it it looks more solid now it doesn't look so flat and i'm just going to drop colors from here the same color i'm just going to drop it here and there just little dabs so that it'll spread slowly and it will add texture that i want okay. i want the texture okay but if you want it smooth then don't do that so just smoothly shade it but in my case i do want the texture so i add it okay so this part is almost done let's see later we just need to add the, the darker green at the very edge but the oranges look great i love them okay so now let's work um here okay using the same mixture but with more yellow so yellow deep or cadmium yellow medium this um will look near it or if you have new gamboge new gamboge is also a nice similar color to yellow deep okay and then you add your warm red depending on warm which warm red you have and then i'm going to add it here near the green area Okay, so we have a deeper orange color here and then it starts to lighten as it goes here so we'll dip our brush in water just the tip just to slowly dilute the color and stretch it to the end and then dip our brush just dip like that in water and then go over the edges here to soften it okay so the more often you paint the more often you'll uh, the you'll be able to understand what i mean when i just dip the tip i dip the whole brush but really it's um, all about controlling your pigment and your um your water the amount of water okay so there's other going back and forth going to your jar going to your paper towel and going to your color okay so now let's add there's a bit of texture here so the seeds have been taken out but there are still some pop marks but just soft okay nothing nothing too deep and too dark because again this is um under light so it's not as dark as this so using the same mixture that we put here, we'll add the details or what we see anyway. So just a little bit here and there. And then for some areas that are a bit darker, then you just add more of the, of the red. Like here, there's a deeper section. So I just add that. And here too. Okay, so you don't have to finish it all in one go. You can come back again later when it's dry and add more layers. Okay, so now it's not too flat anymore. 
but we still have all of this to work with but this one it's uh, to me it looks like a melon already so I'm happy I'm just adding more shadow here and there so all of these you can keep adding later on just wait for each layer to dry hi Joe okay so now let's do the green here the same green that we used for here we will use here all over the edge But for this section, it's just the thinnest line. Okay, and then again with your wet your brush and just work on the ed edges right here and soften the green towards the orange. Okay, and green or let's go here and let's mix a deeper green okay so let's empty a slot right here it's nice to have <laughs> several mixing plates if you're not washing them often like me because you can have several sections with specific colors in them and you can just add or remove one section okay so now we'll we'll need a, a deeper green so you can mix for that if you you want in my case I have um, let's see I have the viridian okay so let me use the viridian this can be a bit extreme sometimes but it's it can be a good base so you just need to add um, yellow or blue or red to it to modify it so the green here is a bit warmer. Okay, so let's add a different oriole and green. Okay, and then also a bit of the olive green to soften it. And then we'll need to add some blue. Okay, so let's add um, French ultramarine. So this is a warm blue. So I'm trying to create a deep green. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so it looks like a nice deep green, but it might be too much. So let me just add more olive to it. A little bit more okay so you you see um, the colors that I mix you just need to mix towards the colors that you're um, trying to get okay so I prefer this to this this is more on the um, bluer green and this is more of a deep a forest green okay so I'm going to add this to the the very edge of the green here Okay, so you can switch to smaller brush if you want, if you want more control. Or with your nice round brush, just use the tip. Okay. And let me just soften this. And again, I'm just going over with a wet brush and just softening it a bit. If you want it to be a, um, to be even darker, just wait for this first layer to dry and then you can go back again with another layer later on. 
Okay, so this section has more of a a, uh, a wider, darker green. So I just added, and I continue with my softening. Okay, so now it looks like uh, this dark green is like the the thickest skin. And now we can work on the green here as well, but I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. Okay, let's use a number one round brush. And using the same dark green that I mixed, just add some areas. It's not the whole edge. So it disappears somewhere here, and then continue. And then here, also very thin. and then thicker, but just a little bit. And going back to my other brush, I'm just going to go over it and soften it here. Here I'll keep it crisp, just here, in the fatter areas where there's more of the, the orange part of the fruit. Okay, happy with that. And now we can work on the um, skin. Okay, so for this, um, you can totally um, sketch your veins if you want. Okay, you can just, um, let me just get this piece of paper. Okay, so you can sketch the, the parts that you see. They're like, um, they actually look like roots that are very small and um, intertwined so you can just go and do your veins like this okay they're very varied in shape and sizes okay so you can do something like that you can actually detail it and then paint in between the um, the pencil sketches okay but in my case I'm just going to apply it um, you know, just uh, winging it, not being too de um, accurate, but getting the general shape of the, um, what do you call this, the patterns. Okay, so I'm going, get, I'm going back to my mix earlier of Oriolin. Okay, and Olive. Okay, so now I've switched to a, a bit of a smaller brush. So let me just add more water. I will need to prepare a bit of the mixture because um, this is a big section. And again, you can always test it on your paper just to be sure that that's the green that you're looking for. Okay, so I'm happy. And I'm just going to apply it in little splotches, okay, so like so. So I'm not following any design exactly. I'm just applying it like this, okay, so you can do something like this if you want or you can sketch it out if you really want to follow it exactly. It's 
So just be sure to leave the white sections here and there because you want the vein-like patterns to be there. So vary the shapes and sizes. So this will take time, okay, but it will be worth your effort. So just go for it. And again, you can always sketch it out if you find this to be too challenging compared to actually sketching it out. Okay, so you do whatever works for you. But just try to connect each one to the one beside it. So again, vary your sizes and your shapes and you're good to go. So when I looked at this earlier, I'm like, I don't have to... <laughs> I don't think I want to sketch it anyway. There won't be two, I doubt there will be two the same textures. It's like a fingerprint practically. Okay, so you have to cover everything. this whole section. So I'll make it smaller as it goes down there because it's more hidden and the perspective will also make the shapes a bit smaller. So if you have a nice thin brush, it will make your life so much easier because you will be able to control the little shapes much better. So as you can see, I'm tapering it down smaller as it goes down here. And I'm also making it a bit darker because again, it's under so it will be in, uh, more in shadow. And I'm also making the spaces between the whites smaller because perspective will also do that. Okay, so you're you're tricking you're tricking the eye that this section is going in, so things are starting to appear smaller and near each other. Just be careful to see where your circle ends. I 
Okay, so um, you can see the effect. It's bigger here and it becomes smaller here. It looks like it's really, um, it's following the shape of a sphere. So I find that even though this takes time, I'm not so stressed about the details. Unlike if I really follow a, a very clear sketch of where things are. For me at this point, what's important is, does it look like the outer part of a melon? And if it's yes, then that's okay. All right, so for some areas, I'm just going to see if I need to add more detail somewhere or not. Okay, so we have to finish the whole thing. And here it's also a bit um, compact. Because again, this is going towards the side and farther from you. So just need to add more of the mixture. Okay, there you go. So I used Oreo and green, this brighter green and then um, olive green. Okay, so but you can mix your own greens if you don't have these colors. Okay, so again, continue with the texture. Just make sure this part is dry before you press over it. I often make the mistake and you don't want to, you know, ruin your hard work. Again, as mentioned earlier, I'm going to make the spaces between the patterns smaller as well as the patterns to also indicate that this is to the side. And don't forget to keep varying your shapes. And even though they're smaller, still create different shapes. And overlap, oops, overlap towards this green line a little bit. So how do you guys, what do you guys do to your uh, fruits? For example, for bananas, I like to bake them to banana bread. They're also great for shakes. I haven't tried baking an apple pie, but I find them ever so pretty. <laughs> I just really buy them. So again, it takes time. It's a bit like scales, actually. But it's actually very meditative 
because it's quite repetitive it's just you don't have to think too much about it you just you know at the so at the beginning it's like who you're trying to be more thoughtful about how you place things but at some point um, you just forget about it and you're just doing it naturally so it might seem complicated but it is rather meditative Okay, and again as I go downwards I don't know if it's possible to go even smaller but I will again to just show that it's going down inwards okay so just this little tweaks to how you do things will help you show that things are in a circular shape things are going down and fading away and are darker are in shadow so try to remember your mixtures if you mix them if you have a color journal you should write them down okay so yay that's done but we have this here so hello yes long time no see glad you're able to join today okay so let me just add more mixture just these two greens and do the same here okay so here it's also just small So don't be dissuaded by the the sheer amount of effort you need to do for this. It's I find it's not too hard really. Just use a nice pointed brush and um, it won't be too difficult. And again as I go downwards here I will make the patterns smaller just finish this up almost there and like I always remind you guys I'm doing this in one sitting but you don't have to and I encourage you to just take your time and really do it at your own pace Okay, and <clears throat> now we need to add the darker green, which we already sort of have, but I want to first go over it with a mix of olive. So let me just go over this like so. Okay, so the, for the first layer, just the color that's the same as what we used for the patterns so I I know you already if you've seen me before this is how I do things I really like to layer my colors 
it's really how you will make things look more three-dimensional, more solid. And here too. Okay, and once that's dry, then we can add our darker green that we also used here. Okay, so I'm just reawakening it. And it's not a huge swatch, okay? So we'll start from the middle of the green that we placed. Okay, and I'm just going to dab here and there, make it thicker in some areas okay and with I wet my brush and again just thin the edges so instead of just a huge swatch of line I created a more textured organic looking line also basing it on the the reference photo and you can always add another go later if you want to darken it okay so I'm always going for the softer effect first because you can always add darker details later on. Okay, so try to control it first. So it doesn't look so harsh and out of place. Again, softening the edges. And here too, let's not forget this one. And then, as mentioned, I'm going to go back again and add the darker sections. But instead of just going with a one full line, I'm trying to break it here and there. Here too. So even this dark green, it's not a whole swatch of line of dark green. It's also mottled here and there. I like to add details like that because it makes it look more like the real thing. And let me just add a bit of a shadow here. To also show that this, these two parts are separate. here too a little bit and uh, we have our melon <laughs> okay so 
Uh, I'm happy with this. I can darken this, I guess. Let me just go over this. But again, you don't have to do this all in one go. You can go back to this tomorrow. You can add more details later. Okay, take breaks because everything will be much better with fresher eyes. Sometimes your eyes are too tired or your hands and you just end up ruining things, you know. So just always take breaks. We work, we all have our own pace of uh, working things. Some people, you know, finish things quickly. Some people take time. We all have different processes so you do you okay you don't have to do the same as me okay so again just adding a bit of shadow here and there darkening contrast will greatly um, help your work okay so the more that you have your dark darks and your lights and your highlights um, it will give your work more depth, more volume, make it look more real. So don't be afraid to add the dark darks, okay? You actually want them. If all your colors are just on the mid-range, um, that sometimes that's the only thing that's keeping your work back, okay? So don't worry, I've been there. When I used to um, sketch, I would um, look, I would sketch very lightly, like all mid-tones. But once you, you know, get past the, that fear, um, everything will improve. Okay, so I'm happy. When I added the, the darker darks, they actually look uh, so much better. Okay, so I do think it looks like melons. <laughs> okay, so as you can see, I didn't do this hyper-realistically, and yet it looks like a melon anyway. So you don't, again, you don't have to do that. Okay, so don't go crazy over the, the texture unless you're aiming to really paint it super, super realistic. Okay, so try to enjoy it um, and take your time. You can do this um, in a, you know, several days, not, not all in one day. Or you can do it in one day, several um, breaks. Okay, so just enjoy it. The most important thing is to enjoy it. Okay, so I'm now going to flip back to my face. Uh, so I can say goodbye to you guys. Okay, and zoom out a bit. I'm so zoomed in. All right, so thank you for joining me. Um, this is our melon. I kept saying lemon earlier. Um, this will again look so much better with the, um, the, the shadowing, okay, so that they're not floating in the air. Okay, so don't forget to add the shadows um, in the reference photo. You will see it there. You will see um, where the shadows are. Um, it's going here. So the light is here, a bit here. Not not too right, but a bit here. So that there's the shadow here and also here. Okay, so once you add that, um, it, it, the surface doesn't have to be complicated. In my case, um, it's orange. I'll probably use something with a bit of gr uh, blue. So they're contrasting. And my, one of my favorites is either uh, Prussian Blue or Indigo. Uh, perfect um, surface colors for me. Okay, so um, I hope um, you'll try this out. And if you do, please um, share your own version with me. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see all our uh, melons together. Uh, and it's uh, just in time for the coming summer. Um, and uh, we'll keep painting summery stuff. Also, if you guys have suggestions for summer themed um, watercolor or even oil that you'd like us to cover, suggest a way, all right? Because um, of course, we'd love to cover things that you also want to work with. So don't be shy, let us know, and um, we'll try to cover it if we can. Okay, so thank you for joining me, even if we started late. Um, due to technical difficulties and I hope um, you'll join us again whenever we have lives and have a great day everyone. Bye!